Good morning, everybody. Welcome to... I just about fell over. Welcome to day two of our Thames River adventure trip. I don't think I got a sensor for that. <laughs> he is actually just finished eating bacon and eggs, if you couldn't tell. Are you still eating? No, I'm done. Wow, that was quick. Oh well, yeah, eggs in a baggie. Yeah, he does uh, pre-makes his eggs and stuff in the baggie and then just heats it up with some warm water. Voila, it's not even dehydrated. You could dehydrate that. Oh yeah, I could, but... It's extra time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, little explanation. I'm feeling much better than I did this morning when I first woke up. When I first woke up, I felt like I was cooking alive. Not because of my tent or anything, but I may have had a touch of either sunstroke or heat stroke when I went to bed. And when I woke up this morning, I was overheating as well as shivering with the chills, a pretty bad nausea. And it just wasn't cool. It was not cool. I got up and I come out and I stood out here and I watched a baby deer walk from way out in the corner here all the way up to about where this white patches are down here. I didn't and see it so it didn't happen. Whatever. <laughs> we did have another visitor in the night last night though. Have a look at this. What in the heck is this? Crop circles? Yeah. Delaware crop circles man. Oh yeah. You gotta watch some Delaware crop circles. You could lose a whole tent that way. <laughs> So we're getting our camp area packed back up. I think I'm just gonna say heck it and stick to the journey. He said we could either stay and rest for the day and then do a really serious push for distance tomorrow to give my stomach a chance to kind of recalibrate or whatever. Yeah, that's it, recalibrate. Yeah. Did you try turning it off and on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, my stomach is starting to feel a little bit better already and I don't feel as bad so uh yeah what was the other option uh, oh paddle for five hours yeah we could pull out at melbourne road and then get picked up at melbourne road which is probably not even halfway of the actual journey nope and i don't like the idea of having to give up even if it is from heat stroke or feeling sick or whatever i don't like the idea of having the collar quits too soon so we're gonna keep going we got here when it was pretty much dark yesterday. You guys couldn't see, so the general tour of La Campa site has my tent and my bags and everything. I'm in the process of taking it down. Your tent looks like kind of a stretched out version of Darth Vader's helmet. <laughs> I've it, heard that before. It kind of does. I've heard that before. And it's actually dark green, folks. It's not a black tent. This is kind of neat, though. Okay, I told you guys last whoa, last night before I went to bed, yes, I just about wiped out, that there's the Thames right there. Okay, I'll do a little zoom action so you can see the flow. We got a bit of flow going on today. Yeah. That's good. And then this here was what they called Sharon Creek. And it used to go, oh, hang on. This is some really slick ground here, and I don't got any good tre treads on my feet. So this here is Sharon Creek and it used to go all the way up and continue on up in there and then right up near Delaware I guess there's this huge rope swing and people used to swing down in. Sharon Creek. I know some of the local viewers will have known that place before. So this little inlet right here, Clarence saw that and he's like well if we got to take a muddy bank for the night we'll take a muddy bank because we weren't finding any sights. And then when we got in here we seen this metal staircase. And a trail. And it was just, it was like it was meant to be, you know, I was almost thinking, because he knows a lot of these areas along here, it'd be kind of cool if you could do your own boondocking app. But instead of boondocking, it would be like tent docking or canoe docking. Yeah. Yak docking. All right, so we're going to pack up the rest of the site. And we're just going to keep hammering on through. I think I feel good enough that I don't want to call it quits. No. Nope. Good, I don't want to call it quits. Neither do I. Okay. Time to pack things up. <laughs> oh, we got our site all cleaned up. The aliens took it all. Yeah. Oh. Aliens abducted our stuff. Not us, just our stuff. One burned out campfire. 
He flattened that grass like a pro. <laughs> oh yeah. Speaking of flattened grass, there's our crop circles one last time. We got her all cleaned up. I just have to come back up and get my coffee. I can go load my boat and we can get the heck out of here. Damn right. All right, onward. Okay, so a bit further along the river. It's been a pretty good travel so far. Keeping a good pace. Hitting our little speed sections. You ever play those old 80s racing games? Oh, hang on. I gotta fix myself here. I gotta check myself before I wreck myself. Yeah, that's it. There we go. Anyways, those 80s video games and you'd hit the arrows and they'd shoot you along forward. Well, that's what these little mini rapid sections are like here on the Thames. Nothing more than a class one, you'd say? No. Earlier in the season, we uh, would have hit like uh, some of the ones we did were would have been easy class two. Yeah, but this is an early in season, so those would have been like oh, ones, yeah. right? All, all class, class one. one. Uh, that's all we've hit is class one. Yeah, but they're still fun. They are fun. Not much bottoming out if you take the right path through there. Dang it, I gotta fix my boat again. But it's actually a pretty good trip. The reason why I stopped to film this was I wanted to mention right now where we are in the Thames is Oneida land over here and we're, we're estimating Middlesex over here. And then once we get up to the bridge up ahead a bit, uh, it becomes Muncie on one side and Oneida on the other. So we're passing through quite a bit of different land. Look at these. These wild sunflowers of sorts. Random nature moment. So this is the Muncie Oneida Bridge. Da, 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 da. So once we cross past this point, and yes, I'm going sideways again because I stopped to film. So I'll fix that right now. One handed paddling. There you go. Good little bit of wind right now, but the sun is so intense. I'm, I'm gonna be having to take a break here soon just to cool down a bit. I don't wanna be feeling like I did this morning again. It's okay to push it, but not to the point where we're feeling sick. This guy back there. <laughs> Enjoying the ride? So the next four to five hours, we're gonna be on native land. And that's pretty much just a straight through shot for us. So we'll update once we're a little bit further along as usual. <laughs> I had this crazy urge to wanna to stop at this island. So Clarence is gonna amuse me and join me out here. Good thing we missed that. Yeah, there's another part of a broken beer bottle up here. Tons and tons of clam shells, some full, some empty. Well, the full ones are in the water. That's a recently emptied one. Is it? Oh no, I don't even think it's empty. If it isn't, it's probably just full of mud. But, just in case, right? So a raccoon will come along and eat it anyways. Watch where I step, because there's lots of goose poop. But, it's an island, all our own. Big empty clam shell. Watch where you walk, eh? Tons of goose poop. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the water is extremely warm right next to the island, but as soon as you get out here, it's chilled. It's a nice little spot right here, and I thought it'd be worth uh, stopping and just wandering around it for a minute, just to stretch the legs, and then we're back in the river. Still a couple more hours of paddling through uh, in residence. Yeah, and then we will be finding somewhere to probably camp once we're through. All right. Mostly clear for uh, Thames River water. 
for the reputation, the bad rep that this river has. Just don't drink it. Ah, it's carrying me away. I wanted to film this and show you guys. Look at this. Oh, I gotta turn around. Every time I stop to film something, either the current turns me sideways or the wind turns me sideways. It's pretty cool, eh? But this right here, you can almost see faces in a lot of this up here. Just thought I'd stop and share that with you guys. Still making our way down the Thames. Just kind of coasting. I'll wait for this guy back here. And he's waiting for something. I don't know. Anyways, yes, still back on the town, or still going down the Thames. I think we're still in the res area. Are we still in the res area? Yes, we are. Until we yeah. hit Melbourne Road Bridge. There you go. Until we hit Melbourne Road Bridge, which is probably still a ways off. But we've got some shade now, and it's a good thing because my skin is cooked, fried, too much sun. But I just thought it'd be a clever idea to pick up the camera and say, yep. Yeah, we're still paddling. You wanna know what time it is? Okay, well, this is north behind me. That's west. There's the sun. That's what time it is. Talk to you guys in a little bit. Sick of that train bridge. No railings on it. Obviously, it's not for people. Those are individually hand carved or hand poured, anyways. And then you look at the marks on the side here. You can see how high the water level actually gets up. And that's all ice blocks hitting and chipping away at it. Pretty groovy. Oh, geez, there's a steel plate there. You see it? That's from up there. <sighs> Pretty epic. I like old bridges. I won't lie. Well, guys, Clarence made a wrong turn. We no longer have boats, we don't have anything anymore. We're hiking it now, we're not boaters, we're hikers now. Well, just kidding. So you can see this sign here. Middlesex County, and there's another sign. Way, way over there, I'll see if I can't zoom in that far. Well, oh man, that's really hard. Anyways, this is some of South Middlesex. We have actually now canoed through and beside two different res, Oneida and Muncie. We have gone through a few different counties like Middlesex, Oxford, dipping in and out of Elgin County, I'm sure. And uh, now we're actually kind of near Iona. So from logistically from St. Thomas to here isn't that long of a drive. But St. Thomas to London and down to here would actually be a fair good drive. Uh, as far as paddling goes, the river meanders so much it seems like it takes so much more time to travel on it to get anywhere. And right now we're at, we've, we've got a spot that Clarence knew about from previous trips of his and it's right by the road that goes to, oh, oh no, Iona. Iona Road, right? That's Melbourne Road. 
Okay, this is Melbourne Road. There you go, guys. And that's the Thames. And that spot right there, you can see the muddy bank. Oh no, it isn't that spot. Ooh, there's some huge paw prints down there. But, uh... It's just over and around here is where we put our, pulled the boats out of the water. There's not much of a shoulder here, so I don't want to spend much time on the bridge freaking people out. It's not meant for people on foot. This is a little designation here on the bridge I thought I'd add. It says 05. 1989. I'm older than this bridge. So many hours of paddling accomplished. Many more to go. But pretty soon we're going to be getting into area that has a lot less current. There's less flow. Gotta be polite and wave. I'm Canadian. <laughs> so there's a lot less flow to it where we're approaching to. Um, less current. I think I'm repeating myself. See, there's going to be a lot more actual paddle paddling. Whereas this here, it's kind of been like a big lazy river. You can kind of just take it easy. Or when you paddle, you go quicker than your average speed. Either way though, that's part of the adventure. is just exploring, seeing the different parts of the river. Thankfully, Clarence knows of a few little spots off the side of the river like this one here that make for great camping. Level ground, I will get a good night's sleep tonight. Oh, guess what? Look at this. <laughs> I'm zooming in on them. Dude, you're out of focus. Oh, geez. <laughs> As we're doing this, we just had something leap from tree to tree up here. I saw some big paw prints in the mud down here. Oh, yeah? yeah, like big three clawed paw prints. Wolverine was down there hacking at the mud or something. Nice. Oh, I got land legs. It's nice to know that we uh, have a superhero <laughs> around here. So. Yeah, uh, I don't know if he showed his vlog, but I might as well show you guys. <laughs> People have been dumping stuff in here. This is actually like a little river access area. That almost looks like yeah. a Santa suit. An aquarium dumps right here. You want a Santa suit? <laughs> no. Oh no, it's an inflatable Santa. An inflatable Santa. Okay, like kids, don't watch. <laughs> Just rewind and don't watch the last 30 seconds. Oh, okay. Well. Yeah, oh, yeah. His wife is bringing us Timmy's. Because it's not too far of a drive for her yet to come and do that. Just big shout out. Thank you, Carol, Clarence's wife. You're awesome. Hopefully the lighting situation's working out all right. Uh, it's a little bit bright to look at, but you kind of get used to it. I'll be blind for five minutes. It's just that dark out because it's the end of the night. Pretty good paddle today all in all. A bit of overheating. Day started out really rough. Felt like I was going to just call her quits and... And you know, Clarence being such a nice guy over there, I was gonna, he was gonna let it happen. You know, he's like, dude, if you're actually sick, you know, we can just wait it out till you're ready to move and we'll move. Well, you guys heard this morning. Yep. We stuck with it, we carry forward, we don't give up. Thanks for watching today. For now, it's the end of the night, so we'll see you guys in the morning. It's actually kind of like a magic trick, because I'll just go like this, and then it'll be morning. Good morning everybody. It is now officially the third day of our camping trip. We're sitting on the side of the river. We're more the side of the river than the side of the road. I showed you guys where we were last night, so guess what? I don't even have to tell you. I just realized that. We have mostly packed up camp. That's my ground tarp. My tent's already packed. Just waiting to finish my breakfast and get the rest of my stuff packed in the orange and black bag. Clarence has pretty much got all his gear already done up and gone. His tent's already away. Now he's making his brekkie. What's on your menu this morning? Eggs and a bakey and a hash brown. Forgot to eat my hash brown yesterday. Oh. I'm on two hash browns today. See, like bacon and eggs, riverside, oh, with a lot. side of hash brown. Actually, the thought. Oh, that was ice yesterday. Yeah, it was ice last night. 
So here's what I was on my breakfast menu. Instant oatmeal, apple and cinnamon, and a thing of maple and brown sugar. This is actually two servings of instant oatmeal to fill me. And I've got my coffee. My vaporizer all set up. I'm now on my last, this is this is my last bit of battery kind of kind of battery power when it comes to vaping. The others were uh, what do you call that? The others used 18650s. I have no way to charge those batteries out here. But this can be USB charged at the end of the day, which is what I'm hoping to be able to do. Because I'm not completely without vape. Wow, I can feel the hate coming off of there. <laughs> He uses the uh, Primus fuel, half butane, half propane. Primus stove too. Yeah, no propane. All propane, no propane. Hank Hill would be proud. <laughs> Actually, Hank Hill would be proud of me. I've got pure propane. You gonna mix in inferior fuel with your gas. <laughs> but yeah, everything's going good so far this morning. Nice blue skies when we thought we were gonna end up waking up the thunderstorms. And the red sky this morning took off without warning. It's literally gone. <laughs> it always does. I just made I made my own version. Which means that we'll have uh, storms later. The way sailors. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. I always heard that saying. Your grandfather used to say. And you go. We got some boats down there. You kind of see Clarence's with the sun peeking through. Oh yeah. So we'll be hitting the river. We're gonna try and make Wardsville tonight. It's a good couple more hours of paddling, probably you say at least four. Four to Dutton, probably about three more to Wardsville. There you go. <coughs> but uh, that'll actually be a light paddle compared to the last two days. Good stuff. All right, on with the day. I'm gonna finish eating breakfast. I'm gonna stop vlogging so he can so he can vlog. We'll talk to you guys in a little bit. We're on the river again. Everything's loaded. River's flowing. We're gonna join that flow in just a minute. Well, Clarence kind of already is just a little bit. <laughs> Getting all set up so that we don't have to do any fidgeting around. We can just go. So, uh, see something cool along the way? We'll make sure we record it. You know the whole drill. Day three, let's get this underway. A little further down the river, it's this random dock. Just chilling. A dock just chilling. No maintained trail going up the hill or anything. Nah, but there's a house up there. Yeah. Man, if I had a house up there, I'd have a whole cleared section going down. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Is it hot? It's hot. It's warm. It's only warmer. <laughs> oh, yeah, hot's all right. Better than it being freezing cold, I suppose. It already feels like 30 something degrees. We're supposed to hit like 42 today or something, 44. Dude, there's your car. <laughs> yes, folks, that's a car sitting right there on the bank. Half crushed, but still a car. Groovy. Well, obviously, she had to, but. We're tracking a duckling right now. Little baby duckling. Uh, I'm trying to steer because my boat is, of course, going sideways while I'm filming. Just following them. It's all alone out there. No mama duck. Actually, it doesn't look like a, t a tiny baby duck. But it's definitely not a full grown one either. He's gonna start honking at you. I love the random nature moments. It's a very scenic looking farm.
But you guys seen, probably in that little bit of B-roll footage right there, we found a whole flock of horses up there. Wow. It's pretty cool. You get some footage of the horses? I did. Awesome. Pretty I think cool. It's the herd, though. Yeah, well they flock. <laughs> flock herd. They flock. Group. <laughs> hey, at least I know there are horses and not like llamas. A collection. Those of are horses. giant llamas up there. Yeah. They're camels. Camels. <laughs> Canadian camels. Yeah. <sighs> so we're just drifting along, enjoying it. Not really drifting, we are paddling. But during this moment of horsing around, right? Uh, one hand paddling, look at that. Got to stay on course. Got a nice long shady section here, you know, not a whole heck of a lot of wind. Unfortunately, not a heck of a lot of cloud cover. So that means when it's hot, it's dang hot. Well guys, still on the river, roughly about one, two o'clock-ish, I think. Two-ish? Uh, yeah, around there. Something like that. And we have some thunder and some lightning. No, no lightning, but I just felt like trying to squeeze that song in there. I actually haven't heard Imagine Dragons in probably a half a week now. But now I hear real thunder and this is what it's going to look like. It's definitely some kind of weather. And normally it'd be like, ooh, you know, I kind of hope it misses us, blah, blah, blah. But it's been so hot out. My legs are red cooked. Like, there's your color comparison. Show you a little thigh. Don't get too excited now. Yeah, I am burnt, nice and crispy. Clarence is like Mr. Red Lobster himself over there. Sound like I called you Red Lobster. Red Lobster. Yeah, it's hot, so a downpour will feel really nice. We thought he just got done recording his bit. I figured I better pull out the camera, let you guys know we're gonna get some rain. We're going into some weather, so I won't be able to record during that. I don't know where the Activion is. Actually, I do. I'd have to dig it out, put it in a wet case in order to keep filming through it. We'll see what happens. I might try. I might just say heck it and paddle on through the rain. Kind of hoping we do get rained on though because it'll feel really, really nice. Oh, you guys like how chillaxed I am? Like, check this out. I got this set up. Lazy Boy River right here. That's the, the natural current of the Thames just gradually pushing us along. We literally could lazy river this whole thing, but it would probably take closer to 10 days to do it all. And you'd still have to paddle once you get closer to St. Clair, Lake St. Clair, because of the uh, inlet flow. Anyhow, enjoying the trip. Do you guys hear the thunder? Okay, talk to you guys in a little bit. Wish us luck. Hey right, guys, come with me. Time for a land-based adventure. Well, I tell you a quick story. So we stopped because um, we seen a washroom, <laughs> uh, an opportune spot. You don't you don't want to try peeing and standing from a canoe because you're either gonna fall out of your boat or you're gonna pee all over your canoe, and that's just it's no good. Oh, okay. I'm trying something barefoot. So I'll continue this story while I climb. Um, when I went to get back in my boat, oh, I'm running into a problem here, guys. When I went to get back into my boat, I underestimated the clay bank that we stepped on. <laughs> and I went in. <laughs> you fall off there. I'm not carrying your ass off the water. <laughs> Quote what he just said, if I fall down, he's not carrying me out of the water. I won't fall. I'm not, this is as high as I'm going. I just wanted to get a majestic shot. You guys want to see? Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. I actually had to climb up here just to get this shot. You still hear thunder rolling in the background? Yeah, it'd be nice if it actually hit us. The first one we were showing you guys, it totally missed us. Just totally, totally missed us. And while I'm on the subject, ooh, okay. have you guys ever noticed how much easier it is to climb up than it is to climb back down? 
Oh, yeah. My feet are so not accustomed to doing this. To doing this. Oh, bear with me, guys. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, you little faith. Thought he'd have to carry me out because I'd fall. That's just a... a it didn't mean he didn't think I was going to make it. He's just letting me know he can't carry me out. <laughs> well, I can carry you out. I'm just not going to if it's based on your own... Uh... Stupidity? Yeah. Well, that's not I stupidity. That's that. adventurous. I had I seen a spot I could climb up, and I had to. But you guys see this line right here? That's its regular water level. So this is how low the water level actually is right now. But when it floods... Do you see any of those uh, weeds or anything in the trees to kind of show the level? Usually if it floods, it's probably above that bank over there. Like when it mega floods. <sighs> Alright, us bunch of topless paddlers are going to get back at the river. We don't have much farther to go to where we're, uh, to where we're stopping today. But if we want to be able to time it right so we don't end up having to stop in uh, Moravian Town Reservation, then we don't have to. And we can time it right, we might make, what'd you say, tomorrow night, Chatham? Yeah, we'll make Chatham tomorrow night. Yeah, we should be making Chatham tomorrow night. So in which case, we'll probably text Garrett later. Gee, brother, if you're watching this, we'll let you know later on if we if that's actually the plan, and roughly we'll tell you what time. What's that? <laughs> Nothing, I gotta hang a leak. Oh, okay, so yeah, let's keep this family friendly. Yeah. Finally got one. Been seeing them fly away all the way down river. I finally got one. So I'm showing for you guys. It's a genuine bald eagle right there. The yeah. Canadian bald eagle. Yeah, at least seen his passport. Yep. And he's gone. It's all American. So I'm going to have to say for the first third part of the journey, if we were measuring it in thirds, we had a group of pterodactyls, well, blue herring? Yeah. Blue herrings, pterodactyls, that were escorting us down the river. They'd fly ahead a little bit, wait for us, we'd catch up, they'd fly ahead. Well, we upgraded, we switched up to that bald eagle that you just seen, I'm not even kidding, he does this, he'll sit in the tree and wait for us, and then fly ahead a bit, we catch up, and away he goes again. Could have sworn I even seen a nice cold bud in his hands. <laughs> oh, we're approaching, uh, I guess it's Denboro Road Bridge. Simpson Road. Or Simpson Road. It comes up as either or on the map. So, yeah, we're actually making progress. And then the next one's Wardsville, right? No? Pratt Siding and then Wardsville. Yeah. Okay, back to paddling. A few hours later, quite a bit of paddling later. Ooh, I gotta make a course correction while I'm talking you guys bear with me here we are now roughly on the right side of the bank is Big Ben conservation area we're just hitting a little power-up zone here what'd you see <laughs> we're gonna bump Clarence a little bit right there <laughs> I wasn't trying to, it just happened. Sure. Oh, oh, I hear that guys? We just bottomed out just a tiny little bit. It's okay, we got the tank of boats here. So yeah, I just wanted to point out to you guys, all up and along here for our, the next, I'd say, half hour of our paddle is Big Bend Conservation Area. I don't know if it's a campground that you go in and pay and camp, or if it's just a nice looking area. But, yeah, we're passing it. And looking back on what we just went through there. So we're making decent progress. It's a little longer than we were anticipating for this little spot we're heading to. But, you know, we'll get there. There's the camera battery light. Yeah, I stretched this battery for two days. That's pretty good. So I guess I should start do my whatever I'm gonna say. 
I don't know much about when it was done or what was done, but I know there was an old bridge and a new bridge. There's the pillar from the old bridge that remains, and the new bridge. Not so new. Doesn't look that new, really. So how long's that pillar been standing there all on its own? What you guys think of that? Old enough that they still had the feet left in the yeah, it's um, Imperial, not metric. Pretty groovy. So was it just a one pillar span? The other one would have been over here. I think it came this way. Cool. Oh yeah, just so you guys know, that's the Wardsville Bridge. That's going, looking that way would be going north and towards Wardsville. We're doing pretty awesome. Just a quick update for you guys. My glasses are fogged up. We are just <coughs> past Wardsville, looking for a place to camp. It's about to get dark. Yeah? Yep. You say like 8, 8.30ish? Yep. Uh, and uh, we haven't found any decent spots yet, which means the only other option if you don't find somewhere to camp is either tie your canoe off and sleep in your boat, which I'm not really too keen on doing tonight. I'd like to clean it before I try sleeping on it. <laughs> or just keep on paddling. And neither of us have the energy. We're both hungry. We've had enough granola bars to feed an army between the two of us. He doesn't like his phone. Anyhow, we're gonna keep searching. We'll update you when we figure out what we're doing. I don't think we passed my spot. Well guys, several hours later, as you can tell by the spotlight and the um, pitch blackness out here, we're literally on a gravel bed on the side of a river because we just, we couldn't find a site in time. And that's part of the thing, I guess, of Times River camping, right? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, one downfall. We did see a couple spaces, a couple places, I should say, we could have uh, taken, and we probably should have, but there's no going back up river. So this is what we do, this is what we settle for. Here's how I'm sleeping tonight. Here's my boat. Got my air mattress laid out on a tarp in the boat. I'm gonna be sleeping like that. But the, of course, I'll have my bug shirt on because there's a million gnats flying around and Clarence is doing something similar in his boat. Ah. Okay, I'm shutting my light off though because I'm being attacked by bugs. I finished tarping up this gear. We'll see you guys in the morning. Good morning guys, how you doing? I hope you guys slept well because I really didn't. I slept in the canoe as I told you last night. It's not set up for that anymore. I just got a sweater and a tarp and I'm all completely packed up. Clarence has been packed up, patiently waiting for me. This is the area we ended up last night though. Middle of the night we found this spot. We had to get off the river because it was gonna be dangerous to try and go any further. We could feel it really picking up here and at nighttime you just you couldn't see what was ahead. Yeah, you can't see branches and rocks sticking out of the water until it's too late. Yeah, and that makes for an easy tip factor. And then if you tip at night, Everything's going downstream in the dark. Yeah. So we played it safe. We camped out here. We're about to get underway. I left a mini Anook Shook here. Clarence has a couple balancing rocks over there. Other than that, I think we're about to be riverbound. I know, I know I'm feeling a lack of motivation, a lack of drive to just want to go and get her done. Pretty sore and I'm pretty tired. And I know this poor guy here is feeling about the same. Yeah, no drive today whatsoever. This would normally be a relaxed day though, right? The fourth day. Yeah. There's just not really a relaxed sight around here. Anyhow, we'll update you guys in a little bit. By the way, we are just before, well, we're just after Wardsville Bridge. Yeah. Probably about an hour after Wardsville Bridge, yeah. if not a bit further. And the next bridge we go under is Clock and Road. So, 
And if it's nice, we'll probably ending the trip early and pulling out there. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I'll wait and explain that in a little bit, but just not gonna make it to Lake Lake St. Clair. That's all. Not enough time to do the Lake St. Clair thing this week. But you know, we, it doesn't mean we're not gonna come back and do the whole trip again. No, I've done it a couple times. We'll do it. Get some tablets going. Alright guys, to save a little time instead of sitting around the campsite eating, I'll do this right here for you. It's Mountain House scrambled eggs with ham and green and red peppers. It's pretty easy, you just boil up your water, measure off a cup of water, put it in, let it sit for like five to six minutes, drain off your excess water, give it a stir, and munch away. This is like quality home cooking style. I'll show you guys, I don't know if you can see it well or not, but this is like quality home cooking right here. The only thing I have to complain about is the excess water, but I mean, you're supposed to drain it off anyway. I'm almost done. See, it's that easy, but I'm not paddling, so I'm going sideways, and we're heading towards the small rapids. So I better finish recording this. Chips Ahoy, good breakfast. Bump. Back on the water. <laughs> Andrew's not steering and he's uh, bumping into me. As he's uh, vlogging about eating his scrambled eggs on the boat. My scrambled eggs. Well, due to a lack of time, we're pulling out at Clacken Road. This looks to be a good spot to try and pull out. I gotta go through with my machete and clear it up just so it's a little easier. But other than that, it's better than taking the chance of getting down to where the day would end and not having anywhere to pull the canoes out, get all our stuff up decently, semi-decently. It's going to be a pain in the butt, but I guess this is where our trip ends today. Underneath this bridge, the muddy banks of the Clacken, yeah. well the Thames, but Clacken Road. Yeah, huh? To quote half, it is what it is. Unfortunately, life happens to us all. Yeah. Just gonna record something real quick here, just because I'm thinking about it. Um, reminder to myself, I actually have to re-record my ending, because I think the battery died. But right here, this is the side of Clacken Road before the bridge. This is where Garrett, my brother Garrett from Chatham, this is where he used to climb one of the spots with his AMC Cherokee. It was a blast. Good days. We may even have video of that somewhere. This is what it looks like sometime after a car is stolen and burned to the ground. Look. Well, we got everything up the hill. I ended up finding a much better path to drag the canoe up. Uh, I think you got, what, one more bag down there? Uh, I got my uh, bags and my seat. Yeah, and then that's pretty much it. This is, uh, this is trip over, I suppose. Now that everything's officially up the hill and out of the water. Let me tell you, I'm pretty sore. Big river trip like this. We covered more miles than I did on my longest year on the French. 130? Yeah, I'd say we're around 120, 130. Kilometers probably, not miles. But either way, that's a lot. Oh, I tell you, the big river trip, it is different than a French river trip. On the river, you've got some flow. On this river, on the Thames, you've got some flow which keeps you moving at a progressive speed. So you're covering a good amount of ground every day. But when it comes to, to time to make camp, you cannot find decent camp spots like we found a couple of decent but not like groomed or manicured and there really should be all along the Thames River there should be numbered sites that people come out and maintain even if just volunteers it would be it would change the way the river trip goes on the Thames but otherwise it is still a different kind of good river trip like you can't put the Thames next to the river and try and compare the trips 
Sorry about that, guys. Camera battery died. But as I was just saying, you cannot compare the Thames River and the French River. They're two totally different types of river systems, and with that will come different types of terrain, like camping territories. Even up in the French River where there wasn't groomed sites, you could very well easily make a site. Not quite the case with the French River or with the Thames River because you've got private property and a lot of stuff like that and it's just questionable in some areas if you should or should not be trying to camp there. Anyways, great trip. We're gonna do it again with a little bit more time. We figure at least seven days because if you push yourself too hard, it's not fun. You want to be able to take your time in case you need time to look for campsites, right? Anyhow, we're going back out. I'm not sure exactly when, but I tell you this much right now. My arms, even though they're sore, I'll be honest, they're pretty sore. My back's still kind of sore. My sunburn is sore, but I can't wait to get back out. I'm already thinking of the things that I forgot, like a better flashlight for nighttime and just a few other little things, a proper seat, other little things like that, and we'll be good to go. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Don't forget to go over to Provincial Clodhopper, check his channel out, subscribe, show him your support. He put together a nice little video that I'm actually, I've been jumping back and forth between editing what you're watching right now and watching his take on our adventure great video it's gonna be a good watch i've already seen some of it can't wait to finish check it out show your support great guy thanks a lot clarence for bringing me with you on that and on that adventure it was great i mean i want to go back let's get on it let's do this again soon everybody's going to want to see us on the second attempt thanks for watching everyone think positive stay positive i appreciate your support i really do keep on smiling Adventure over.